So, are we in for a hyperactive hurricane season? Well, if we were to take a look at the sea surface temperature anomalies as of right now, it definitely indicates that we will be in a more active than usual hurricane season because we clearly see sea surface temperatures are well above average right over the main development region. And this extends a little bit further westward into the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico as well. A little bit northward into the northwestern Atlantic, the temperature, the sea surface temperatures are a little bit closer to average average but the area that matters the most when it comes to determining whether or not we're going to be in for an active hurricane season is the main development region right here and we clearly see sea surf um, su um, surface temperatures are well above average we're going to need to see if this continues on in, um up until the hurricane season um, um until we reach the june july august especially the august time frame but it seems like all indications are pointing towards the sea surf temperatures being a lot warmer than average which definitely will enhance the possibility of a hyperactive hurricane season of course, another big thing we need to uh, take a look at is the Enzo outlook. And as you could clearly see, we're expected to enter a La Nina phase by the time we approach the hurricane season. Even the more um, active hurricane season months like August and September, where the chance raises to nearly an 80% chance compared to the second highest, which is a neutral, which is hovering more so around a 20% chance. So it's definitely like very likely at this point we're going to be in a La Nina phase this hurricane season and that'll play a big role in enhancing the amount of convective activity we see um, over the Atlantic this hurricane season as which will of course enhance the amount of hurricanes major hurricanes and tropical storms we're gonna see so this is what um, typically happens during a La Nina. So during a La Nina, the sea surf temperatures over the equatorial Pacific are a lot cooler than average, which promotes a lot more sink uh, of a sinking motion right over the equatorial Pacific, where the air is con um, constantly spreading. Um, sinking rather than rising because of course what forces air to rise is lightly dense air and since the temperatures right over the equatorial pacific are cooler than normal thanks to the cooler sea surf temperatures that will um that won't promote a lot of lift in the atmosphere um that will make the air molecules a little bit more densely packed which means that it's going to promote more of a sticking motion and since the um, air is sinking so much here and there isn't rising a rising motion of air in this area that promotes um, less strong upper level winds that move towards the Atlantic and rather the cooler sea surface temperatures of the equatorial Pacific allow the hurricane season to have more of an outflow ch channel right over the Atlantic to where the air could sink and if one area of the world um, has sinking air there needs to be an equal amount of rising air at, um, in another portion of the world and that typically happens in the Atlantic hurricane season since uh um, since during La Nina, we see much more lift right over the Atlantic and less wind shear thanks to the air pretty much converging in the upper levels rather than diverging into the Atlantic. That weakens the amount of wind shear over the Atlantic. Um, and of course, um, since there's a sinking air, we see less atmospheric stability. So we see more hurricanes and tropical cyclones than usual over the Atlantic. Another big thing we need to take a look at is what the climatology models are stating because they give a good indication of what to expect in more long term future when it comes to the amount of precipitation over a given area which could give us indication of where the highest amount of convective activity and tropical cyclone formation will occur this hurricane season and as you can see by the August 2024 time frame which is one of the more active months of the hurricane season we see that more precipitation than usual is forecasted right over the main development region which does indicate that we're likely to see more tropical cyclone activity over this area and overall more convective to lead to more tropical cyclone activity and this um higher than average precipitation moves a little bit further westward as well into the caribbean and the gulf of mexico which does indicate that we're more likely to see tropical cyclones develop out of these areas of convective activity and this extends into the western atlantic as well so the northeast and the southeast won't be out of the woods when it comes to um tropical cyclone formation as well as tropical cyclone landfall so you definitely need to pay very close attention to this all throughout the coast 
of the United States, whether you're in the Southeast or the East Coast or the Northeast, it, um, the possibilities are endless when it comes to where exactly a tropical cyclone could move and potentially impact you guys. And of course, same goes for Central America, Mexico, and into the Caribbean. You guys are all expected to receive a higher amount of precipitation than usual. And this doesn't end in September where we see again the um, precipitation anomalies are expected to be higher than normal same goes for October and even the early part of the hurricane season it will be a bit more inconsistent right up along the east coast but the area that matters the most really is the main development region and um, throughout all the hurricane season months it's going to be more moist than average which makes you believe we're going to see much more hurricanes than normal this year as well as tropical storms and major hurricanes. We also need to pay close attention to the wind shear forecast anomalies and as you can see during the month of September, the most typically the most active month of the hurricane season, um, if you're in the blues or the darker blues, that's where you should expect less than usual wind shear. If you're in the darker reds, that's where you should experience a little bit more wind shear than normal. So taking a look at the main development region, we see that it's fairly inconsistent. We have half of the main development region um, experiencing less than usual wind shear while the southern half is experiencing a little bit more however in a scenario like this typically the northern half of the main development region matters a little bit more because it's not very usual for tropical cyclones to move very far to the south um, since the um, since the Coriolis effect doesn't really have um, w would weaken the storm thanks to uh, its close proximity to the equator if it were to move a little bit further southward so overall in general I'd expect less wind shear than usual right over the main development region and taking a look into the july time frame as well it's expected to continue in october as well and same goes for the caribbean it, um you're expected to receive much less wind shear than usual throughout all portions of the year but what's interesting is that when we take a look a little bit further northwest where the northern gulf of mexico and the western atlantic do experience slightly above average wind shear which could hopefully play a role in maybe weakening the, these storms before they make landfall or maybe um a better case just turn these storms out to sea but we're gonna have to wait and see and since uh, the bulk of development occurs right over the main development region during the hurricane season then this might not this stronger wind shear might not even matter because most of the development should occur in this area so you're still bound to experience more um a more likely shot of hurricane landfalls right up along the southeast and even the northeast this hurricane season when we see a la nina hurricane season and a hurricane season more active than this especially when um we see um when we see less than usual wind shear Another thing I also want to point out is that we are expected to be in a positive Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, which de uh, um, which means that we're more likely to see sea surf temperatures be uh, much warmer than average, at least the long-term average between um, 2024 and 1880. And we've been in a positive Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation for around nearly 30 years now, since the mid-90s. So um, we're ex um, and typically during a positive Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, the sea surf temperatures in general are warmer than average, while during a negative phase, it's cooler than average. And this um, multi-decadal oscillation, as the name suggests, um, lasts for several decades typically and it's expected to continue in 2024 so it's pretty guaranteed it's almost guaranteed at this point this hurricane season will be more active than the long-term average and it's highly likely even compared to a short-term average even if we were to compare the years um that's um the years that pretty much um where the atlantic multi decadal oscillation began it's pretty likely at this point it's going to be a much more active than usual hurricane season so here's my hurricane season forecast as of right now of course it is subject to change we're only in the month of february but it seems highly likely at this point we're going to see more storms than usual more hurricanes than usual more major hurricanes than usual of course um, we could see some small changes with the forecast, but you should expect it to be more likely to see, receive more um, storms um, this season um, compared to the short um, to the more recent um, long-term average between 1991 and 2020. I decided to include 
the more recent average because of course if i were to compare the um, average between let's say the 1800s to now then it would give a less accurate representation because a lot of those years include um negative multi atlantic multi-decto oscillations and since and um for and we haven't been in one since the early 90s so for a lot of new people um who haven't lived um during those years um back when it was a negative atlantic multi-decto oscillation it wouldn't really be a good comparison to say that it's going to be a above average compared to that long-term average so i decided to go for the short-term average so it's definitely more understandable of how of how you should compare this hurricane season relative to what you've experienced but um my forecast is that we will see 20 named storms 14 uh, i mean 12 um named hurricanes as well as th um six major hurricanes which is twice as much as the short-term average so i do expect this to potentially be hyperactive and i wouldn't be surprised if we do see more um tropical cyclones than usual this hurricane season and in terms of the specific areas where you should expect a little bit more tropical cyclones than usual at least relative to average um so i'm expecting the hurricane season to be hyperactive right over the main development region which will lead to the hurricane season just being very very active um in general even outside of the main development region because of course storm systems don't stop and end in the main development region they typically go well beyond that point so even in the areas for the westward i expect above average hurricane formation thanks to that and it should and the sea surface temperatures will certainly contribute to that closer to average right over the northeast it's going to be a little bit more of a wild card like it is every year for the northeast um but you still should be aware for and um, any um, tropical cyclones approaching your area this hurricane season and remember whether this hurricane season meets your expectations fall or falls below it or maybe exceeds it just remember all it takes is just one storm to completely devastate your community and millions of others um, across your area so don't underestimate the hurricane season just because it might have it may have not met your expectations so remember all it takes is one storm so make sure to prepare for any sort of major storm that would impact your area this hurricane season but um yeah guys that's it for now and i thank you guys for watching